A solar system has just caught fire near Dubbo in Australia, and like clockwork, the headlines are already basically framing it as solar panels are terrible, they're exploding everywhere, it's, uh, it's a catastrophe and it's horrendous. It is bad though, I mean it's really really bad, hundreds, probably even thousands of solar panels are on, have sort of burnt up and the electronics around them, and uh, yeah, th th you can almost hear the anti-renewable brigade rubbing their hands kind of like Arkwright in his little uh, in his little shop, you know? And uh, yeah, getting ready to post the same recycled comments as well that they've been uh, making for 10, 15, 20 years, something like that. But uh, as always, the truth is a lot less dramatic and much more interesting than you might just think about some solar panels getting a bit too hot and burning. And honestly, if you are actually, uh, if you've got the time and you dig into the numbers, it's kind of ridiculous how predictable the reaction is every single time this happens. So let's talk about what's going on in Dubbo. And yeah, it is an actual genuine place called Dubbo. Australia has really fascinating place names. But uh, yeah, what is actually causing rooftop solar fires in Australia? Let's go over that as well. And why blaming the solar panels is a bit, you know, misleading. It's a misrepresentation of the truth. And it's, it's kind of a bit like blaming a fridge when your toaster catches fire. It's just a bit of a crap way of, of talking about it. So I want to explain why these fires are happening, who is really at fault, are, are the energy companies to blame who actually kind of own it and pay for it, and why some people absolutely love talking complete and utter rubbish about solar panels uh, setting on fire, even though the data completely kills their narrative. Let's jump into it. Hello folks, my name is Ben Alexander. Thank you so much for tuning in. I uh, really appreciate your time and um, yeah, I just want to say thank you very much to these people. These are the channel members and uh, without these people, uh, there are no videos pretty much. So yeah, it feels kind of like every time something happens, like there's a fire at Bush in Australia or like the one that's just happened uh, in the last couple of days on the east coast of Australia, just north of Sydney, really, really bad. I mean, shocking. But uh, it seems like w when these things happen, you can predict the headlines and the news and who's going to say what. Half of the media launches into a kind of frenzy. It's never really, you know, loose wiring in a junction box. It's never install error. It's much more dramatised and, you know, it's horrendous. And uh, yeah, it's, it's never really something as simple as a 12-year-old DC isolator full of water that finally gave up. It's never something logical or common sense. So no, it's always basically solar panels catch fire again because they were made in China. And uh, yeah, and they're terrible for the planet and they're meant to be good for the planet. Oh, that's a, a, a fantastic deep analysis of what's going on. Uh, even though the panels almost never actually burn and today's uh, or yesterday's Dubbo incident is another perfect example of that. So Australia has more rooftop solar per person than anywhere on earth with over three and a half million, syst million systems installed. That's more than households with swimming pools and when you have millions of anything on a roof like air conditioning or antenna boosters or solar panels, hot water systems, uh, you, you know, possums sometimes go on the roofs, go in the into the into the roof and nibble on things and set fires, things like that. So occasionally something is going to go wrong. Of course, it's just kind of common sense, isn't it? So there are around 30 to 60 solar related fires across Australia per year. So I'll just say that again, 30 to 60 solar related fires per year in Australia out of three and a half million solar systems on a roof, on roofs basically. So that sounds like a lot until you realise that there are over 8,000 residential electrical fires annually and almost none of them come from solar, basically. So air conditioners cause far more fires than solar, old switchboards cause more fires, gas appliances cause more fires. So when a solar system does catch on fire, the reason it makes news is because it's unusual. Statistically, the fire you're most likely to have in your home comes from uh, ki your kitchen, basically. You uh, being a crap cook or something like that, or dodgy wiring in the walls. Uh, not from solar panels sitting out in the sun doing their job. So the irony is that in almost every solar fire in Australia, the problem is not the panels, actually. It's almost, it's almost never the case. The panels are usually the safest part of the entire system. Uh, the real issue, and this is something that we've known for years, is almost always one of, uh, one of these three things. A, a DC, a faulty DC isolator switch. It's almost always that, isn't it? Uh, a bad rooftop junction box or poor installation practices like connectors not being fully clicked together. And uh, that's about it. They're your top three reasons, to be honest. So 
All three have the same core symptoms, arcing. So when DC electricity arcs because of uh, a loose connection or water ingress, it creates heat. And uh, yeah, heat leads to melting, melting leads to fire, and because the system is on the roof, the roof timbers uh, catch on fire, and suddenly the whole place is, is smoking, and then you know someone photographs it, puts it on the internet. And uh, yeah, here's the really annoying bit. Australia is one of the only countries in the world that forced rooftop DC isolators onto every single solar installation. Most countries don't do this because uh, they introduce more points of failure, and it's also right in the sun. So it's kind of not great. Maybe you just pull it off the roof and put it on the side, something like that. Some countries do that. Europe doesn't do it. The US doesn't do it. But Australia did years ago because regulators were terrified of installers working on uh, live cables. So now we've got hundreds of thousands of uh, systems with big plastic isolator boxes sitting in the sun, on the roofs, on, on wooden houses all over the country, in uh, yeah, basically in full sun, cooking, baking every day and uh, yeah, slowly degrading until the seals fail and the water gets in and it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like mandating everyone wear a raincoat made of cardboard and eventually it's, it's going to go wrong, you know, there's no question about that. So it's kind of madness and there's a lot of people talking about this, but uh, when you see a fire like the one near Dubbo, even though it's not on a roof, it's on a field, it is a massive solar farm, so the, the odds that the panels themselves spontaneously burst into flames is realistically very close to zero. Uh, solar panels are actually made of glass, aluminium, silicone. They don't really catch fire very easily, although they can sort of uh, have issues kind of similar to that, but not technically just setting on fire and then they burn, of course. But what burns is the plastic and the wiring and the roof timbers, and that's almost always triggered by heat from an electrical arc usually caused by something man-made, uh, either, you know, a bad component or a rushed installation. And uh, yeah, this is why the reaction from the anti-solar crowd drives me mad. Also, there's a huge amount of people all over the, the country and, uh, you know, mainstream media and on YouTube just trying to cash in, basically, on a, on a hot topic, no, no pun intended. But uh, it is just something that they can all just parrot and just... Uh, just talk about and they can they can get your attention for a little while so it's ah, it's kind of shallow really but that is the modern media I think and uh, yeah this is why the reaction from the anti solar crowd drives me mad and uh, yeah, they, they pretty much have nothing useful to say or they don't have the ability to analyze something anymore it seems and uh, yeah they completely ignore the scale of the industry the they ignore the data they ignore any common sense with the reporting they ignore the fact that solar has some of the lowest failure rates of any major energy technology ever deployed. And uh, if you took the same percentage of petrol cars, uh, you know, catching on fire every year and applied it to solar, we'd have basically thousands of rooftop fires annually. But we don't. We, we get a few dozen. That's it. 60 to 80. Most of which are caused by old components that should really not have uh, been uh, forced onto the roofs, but they have, so they need to be replaced. Uh, periodically actually and that brings me to the media so i think the media i think they believe two things people love drama and they love conflict and so that's why they like to report on things like this because they know that there's going to be lots of people who just hate electric cars and hate uh, renewable energy they just think we should burn coal and it's common sense yada 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 so i think that's obviously why the mainstream media are always reporting about that sort of stuff not just electric cars and solar but other things too just in the same way people talk about uh, Trump, you know, people just know that it gets a reaction. So they talk about it, even though it's just quite shallow and they've got really very little to say, to be quite honest. But uh, yeah, people love drama. I think that's the underlying belief here. And uh, especially if it allows them to confirm whatever belief they already have. If you dislike renewables, then you'll say, see, I, I told you, you know, solar is really dangerous. If you support renewables, you'll say, OK, what, what caused it? Uh, let's just try and figure it out. Only one of those groups is actually interested in the truth, may, uh, usually, and let's talk about the truth for a moment, if we, if, we, if we dare. So the truth is that rooftop solar has made electricity cheaper for millions of Australians. It's cut uh, emissions massively. I know uh, two people I was speaking to in the last month in Australia, and they told me that they're actually, they've got a, a credit in their actual energy account. They don't pay any money and they have the air conditioning all the, on, on, on all the time and they basically have, you know, between $100 and $1,000 uh, in credit on their account with their energy provider. And it basically saves the, the average household $1,200 uh, to $1,800 a year depending on where they live. 
So with three and a half million systems, we're gonna see some failures, of course. And if only 50 fires happen in a year, 60 fires, 70 fires out of three and a half million, then that's, that, that's a failure rate of roughly, let me get this right, 0.0014%, if my memory serves me correctly from making notes before this video. So you're more likely to have your washing machine catch fire and you're more likely to trip over your own cat and break a bone, or you're more likely to fall over and hurt yourself in Bunnings. So who's at fault for this fire on the solar park in Dubbo? We actually just don't know. On every solar fire investigation Australia has ever run, the safe, uh, it's usually the DC isolator failure switch, obviously, or a dodgy connector or something like that. I remember once it was actually uh, some of the solar panels that got a bit too hot, and then uh, there was an, that connected to something else, but it wasn't really the solar panels that were on fire, really. Or uh, when some, I think there was one as well recently where there was, I think it was like 200 new solar panels all clicked in together and two of them were not, they didn't click them in properly. They didn't do that part properly. So yeah, maybe the system was old. Maybe the installation wasn't done properly. We don't know. We will find out. Uh, maybe a seal finally gave up. Maybe they got wet, something like that. I'll, I'll bet my lunch. It wasn't the panels on, on fire themselves though. And uh, to the people already using this uh, fire to argue that renewables don't work and they suck. Come on, really? Solar panels are not exploding death traps. <laughs> They're one of the safest electrical technologies ever deployed. Just look at the data, just give it to Google and then comment. Don't just comment anything because you look an idiot. If you want something genuinely dangerous, you know, just, just look at the data for petrol cars, in hot climates, for example, look at the look at the the burn rate on those puppies. It's pretty bad. So, or or like the gas stove in half of our houses in um, half of our homes in Australia. How many of how many of houses have burnt down because of that? It's it's quite a few, but nobody makes dramatic headlines about those because they're not politically interesting. They're not sort of polarizing enough. That's not that's the 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 monetary value in news is if it's polarizing effectively, and if it's not, then it, it's it's pointless, you know. So, yeah, another wave of misinformation and another opportunity to actually talk about the real numbers and you know the real causes and the real solutions. I'd really love to know what you think, especially if you've had an older system replaced or upgraded. Thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate your time. Feel free to say what you want in the comments. I will be reading the comments after this.